for this experiment, I've got two cell phones. And then I've also got four Faraday cages. And I think you probably recognize some of these things. Here I, I have a metal martini shaker. This used to have fruitcake in it. It's a metal tin and it's sealed. It seals itself. This is just two cooking tins. Maybe a pie tins or something on top of each other like that. And this is an old pot. Metal pot. Now, the question is, how effective are these four objects as Faraday cages? They're all metal. Shouldn't they block out a cell phone signal? Well, let's see. Let's see how we're going to do this. If you look up in the corner here of the cell phone. Okay. It says T-Mobile, that's the carrier, and then you can see the bars above it. Obviously, if we block out the cell phone signal, those bars are going to disappear, and even the T-Mobile name will probably disappear too. The same thing happens if you take a cell phone out into the countryside and there's no towers around. Uh, you'll see the signal disappear. Well, the same thing should happen if you put this in a good Faraday cage. It will block the signal and isolate your cell phone. Here I have a second cell phone. This is just one of the throwaway Payne Advance phones. It also has a signal up in the corner. Of course, there's a second way also uh, that you can tell if the signal is, is blocking or not, and that's just to call the phone. So we could actually call the phone inside these two, and if we heard it ringing, then we'd know the Faraday cage failed. Because what we're going to find out here in a minute, um, just letting you in on a little clue. Not all metal objects are equal when it comes to making a Faraday cage. Some things are pretty good and some things are really lousy. And if you want to, uh, if you want to uh, block a signal for some reason, it's crucial that you know this. So let's try each of these objects one at a time. We'll put the cell phones both together in each object and see what happens. Our first test is with the metal pie tins. I've got the pot on top to help weigh it down, help seal it. So let's check. We've got both cell phones in there. Okay, they're both showing a signal, this one and that one. So right away we can see the pie tin failed. Let's go on to the next test. I've had them both now in the fruitcake tin for a couple of minutes, so let's check them. This is showing a signal. This one's not showing much of a signal. Actually, it doesn't show any, but I can see that this one is. So this worked a little bit better, but it's still not blocking the signal. So I would say that failed too. So the next step, let's try the pot. I've had the phones in the pot now for about two minutes. It only takes about a minute or so for the signal to disappear once you put it inside of a Faraday cage. And it's been in plenty long enough, so I'm going to check them now. All right, this one is showing a signal. This one is not. So it looks like, once again, this did not work. So I would say the pot failed. Now we're doing the martini shaker. Let me show you something. 
earlier I put this phone in the martini shaker all by itself and the signal was blocked so I tried to call this uh, I called the phone number and it couldn't get through so if you look here you see it went to my voice my, my telephone call was uh, went to the voicemail because it could not get through to this phone so the martini shaker successfully completely block this phone. Now I have the second phone that we were using inside. Let's check it. If you look, it's kind of hard for you to see. There's no signal at all. So it's, it's blocked this phone as well. So now this brings up a question. The martini shaker has holes in the top. How come the martini shaker it's not completely sealed. How come it works better than all these other objects? Even though it has holes in the top. The answer is that it doesn't ha it's not the holes that make the difference. What makes the difference between a good Faraday cage and a lousy Faraday cage is the conductivity of the metal. How well does the metal conduct electricity? And for example over here the Fouquet, the Fouquet 10, you can see the metal. This metal doesn't conduct electricity very well. That's why a low voltage, low power signal, like a cell phone signal, can get through it. But uh, apparently, apparently the Martini shaker conducts electricity quite well. So it's able to block the cell phone signal. In similar ways, uh, a microwave oven is a Faraday cage. It's all made out of metal, and you know that a microwave will have a screen door on the front, but the screen will still block the microwaves inside from leaving. Speaking of microwaves, I'm going to try a couple more experiments here with my cell phones. First, we'll do the refrigerator. How good a Faraday cage is my refrigerator? It's a metal box. There's my cell phone. Here's an object that you expect to be a good Faraday cage, a microwave oven. After all, it has to hold the microwaves inside. Here's my phone. A lot of people are concerned about the abuse of cell phone technology. They're concerned that, um, uh, of course, you can track or locate someone who is holding a cell phone. It can be used to locate people. And they're concerned also that uh, the cameras or even the sound can be uh, used to spy on them. If you're concerned about that, um, obviously, if you have a good Faraday cage that you have tested, that's the key, you need to test it. Just keep your phones in there. And uh, see, now now no one's going to be able to, to locate you or spy on you. However, you need to keep in mind, nobody can reach you now either. Uh, if your mother-in-law wants to call you right now, she can't get through. Um, so just remember that. It's a, it's a two-edged sword. Once you take the lid off, of course, now she can she can call you. And this is useful in another way as well. Um, this phone here is not doesn't have a plan. This is one of the pay per go plans. You pay in advance for the minutes. Um, you can buy these at uh, big box stores, for example. Maybe you pay for twenty minutes, and every time you get a phone call, they dock a minute off, even if the phone call is only a few seconds long. Anybody who's had one of these phones knows the first thing that happens when you take this home is you get a bunch of junk phone calls from marketers and things and they chew your minutes up really quick. Um, of course you can turn the phone off but if you want to make phone calls all during the day it's kind of a pain to uh, to have to turn your phone on every time. What you can do of course is store your phone like this 
and now no marketers can reach you. Yet if you want to make a phone call out, all you have to do is this quick. Now you can make a phone call. When you're done, you put it back in there. So that can actually save you some money if you have one of these uh, paint advanced telephones.